Juicy, smoky, tender, crispy skin chicken smoked on the offset. Both chickens spatchcocked, one of them wet brined, one of them dry brined, going head to head in the ultimate showdown to determine brine superiority. That's right, in this video I'm going to be making two entire chickens. I'll be spatchcocking them both the same way. One of them will get dry brined overnight, the other one wet brined overnight, and then we're going to season them up the same way, smoke them at the same temperature, serve both of them up, see which one has crispier skin, juicier breasts, the most overall succulent barbecue chicken eating experience. So let's get right into it and take a look at the chickens we're gonna be making. And here we have two ordinary chickens from the grocery store. Giblets removed and padded dry with some paper towels. And I am a big fan of spatchcocking chickens when roasting or smoking because they cook more quickly and evenly. If you've never spatchcocked a chicken before, it's incredibly simple. First, I'll slice a shallow cut on either side of the spine just to sort of guide where I'm going to snip with my kitchen shears. And with a decent pair of kitchen shears, it's pretty easy to snip right through everything on both sides of the spine and then just pull it right out of there. And I'll save this for the next batch of chicken stock I make. I'll then lightly cut into this piece of cartilage, which allows me to easily pop the bird open a little bit more so I can lay it quite flat when I flip it over. And then I'll do the same thing with the other chicken. A couple shallow slices, a little snip snap, snip snap with the kitchen shears, slice the cartilage, spread it open, flip it over, and there we have it. We're gonna get started with our dry brined chicken first. So I'll pat it a little more dry with some paper towels, including all the inside surfaces. And then it's just a matter of sprinkling coarse kosher salt all over. I'll get a nice even coating of salt on all surfaces, sides, nooks, and crannies. Make sure to get under the wings and around the thighs. I'm not especially worried about over salting and going on a little heavy is the point. Now I'll just slap the whole bird on a baking sheet and this whole thing is going into the fridge, uncovered, until tomorrow. Moving on to the wet brined chicken. I like to use this small stock pot as my brining vessel. So in goes the bird, followed by three quarters of a cup of kosher salt, one half cup of white sugar, my quote secret ingredient, one cup of dill pickle juice, and one gallon of cold water. You can add all manner of herbs and seasonings to your brine solution, but in this video I'm keeping it pretty simple since we're mainly trying to compare technique between the wet and dry methods. Now I'll throw a lid on that pot and stick the whole thing in the fridge until tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day and it's time to fire up the smoker. So I'll get a chimney of lump charcoal burning and then into the Oklahoma Joe offset it goes, followed by a chunk of hardwood. I'll let the smoker come up to temperature while I finish getting my chickens ready. And here's our brined chickens with the wet brined on your right and the dry brined on your left. I've patted most of the excess liquid off of the wet brined chicken after taking it out of the brine solution. Now for the seasoning step. I'll first slather both chickens with some olive oil. I don't always use a binder, but it always seems to work well when doing poultry. Not to mention the skin of that dry brined chicken is, well, quite dry. And I need a little something wet to make sure all the seasoning sticks. So I'll just rub down all surfaces and sides of both chickens. And now for the seasoning. Because both of these birds have been brined with salt, I'm using one of my very low sodium rubs. If I used a pulled pork rub or something with a higher salt content, I would definitely worry about over salting. So I'll go on pretty heavy with my low sodium seasoning rub, once again making sure to get all the sides, nooks, and crannies, and so forth. Now the smoker is cooking away at somewhere between 275 and 300 degrees, so in go the chickens. And of course, I'll put a thermometer probe into each one so I can keep a close eye on the internal temps. I'll let these smoke away for a few hours and we'll check back in a little later. Okay, it's a little later. And once I think these birds need about one more hour on the smoker, I'm going to brush them with some melted butter. This is an optional step, but it contributes to a little more flavor, a little more color, and skin that's a little crispier. Anyway, I'll let them keep cooking until the internal temps of the breasts are at least 165 and the thighs are at least 180. 
Jumping ahead another couple hours and both chickens are fully cooked and out of the smoker. The wet brined chicken actually needed nearly a full extra hour to reach 165 in the breasts. So I had the dry brined bird staying warm in the oven in the meantime. But now they're both fully cooked and rested and it's time to start digging in and see how we did. The wet brined chicken is on your left and the dry brined is on your right. You can definitely see the darker color on the wet brine, surely from having been in the smoker for that extra time. The first bite I want to take from each one is a leg. I don't know why, but the leg has always been the first place I reach for when cooking a whole chicken. Let's start with the dry brined. Followed by the wet brined. Well, both are delicious, and there's not an incredible difference between the two with regards to taste, texture, or skin crispiness. But to give that skin a real taste test, I'm going to just peel off the skin from a couple thighs and see how they compare. And they're pretty similar. The wet brined may actually be slightly crispier. Is that because of the brining method or because that bird was cooked longer? I guess maybe a combination of both. Next, the part of the chicken that's easiest to screw up. The breast. I don't really care about the skin on a breast. What I'm looking for is tenderness and juiciness. So I'll cut a breast from each bird and I want to taste a slice right from the middle of each breast. And I've got to give it to the wet brine, which is just a little better than the dry. The skin on the legs and the thighs and the breasts, pretty consistent. A little bit different though between the dry brine and the wet brine. Personally, I think the wet brine skin is just a little bit crispier. The dry brine skin, crispy, but just a little more, I'll say, leathery. Is that exclusively due to the method of brining or does it have anything to do with that I had to cook the wet brined chicken a bit longer? As far as the meat and the juiciness goes, I think across the board, I prefer the wet brined. In recent history, I generally do a wet brine because of how successful it comes out. This, of course, the only time I've done a side-by-side -side comparison like this, but I can really get a sense for which one I prefer. And as I said, I think across the board, I prefer the wet brine. It's hard to go wrong with thighs and legs. They're all gonna be pretty juicy. What really stood out here is the breast meat between the two. The wet brine, I guess to no surprise, is a bit juicier than the dry brine. The dry brine breast meat, just a little bit dry. And again, I cooked both of these to the exact same internal temperatures. So it really does come down to technique with that regard. All that being said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing either method, and both came out quite delicious. But since the whole point of this was to do a definitive experiment to decide which way I'll pretty much always do it from now on, it's gonna be wet brine. And to clarify, I'm pretty much talking about when I decide to spatchcock and smoke an entire chicken. If I'm just gonna throw on some chicken thighs for dinner, well, I'm probably not really firing up the smoker anyway, and I'm gonna do some direct heat barbecue. In which case, I probably wouldn't do any kind of brine. I'd rub it in olive oil, season it up the way I like it, and just cook it over kind of medium high heat. The skin gets very crispy that way, and the meat is perfectly tender. But it's hard to screw up a chicken thigh anyway. When we're talking about a whole bird, especially if you're going to go through all this effort to smoke it, serve it to other people, uh, that's when I think the overnight brine really shines. Anyway, there you have it, my little experiment, and my two cents on which is maybe the preferred method, at least for me. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future smoking and food experiment videos. And consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Great Lakes Country. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm John, and this is Great Lakes Country.